you have an ethos, and, and if so, you know what would that ethos be? Well, just very simply, little ripples make waves. Little ripples make great waves. Little ripples make great waves. Little ripples make big waves. Make little ri big ripples. waves. No, not big. Uh, little waves. ripples make waves. Little little ripples make yeah. waves. They could be big though. I'm hoping to use the music and the band and the whole tour to inspire other people to make differences in their everyday life which can help the environment. The thing that disturbs me is um, in our local paper a couple of months ago the Ramblers Association declared that they support nuclear power and they're anti-wind farms. We are taking our inspiration for this tour from the old American folk hero Johnny Appleseed who lived his life as a service to humanity. And he did this by simply planting apple seeds so to give sustenance to all. Across the 900 miles we are going to walk, we are going to plant our own apple seeds. And we do this as a symbolic gesture that only with man's help in hand can a potentially overwhelming environmental crisis be avoided. I can't look anymore. As a band, well, I think we're going to just play some great gigs, meet some great people, and have some fun. My greatest worry is that I get an injury and I can't do it, uh, but we get jumped in a major city and have all their stuff nicked, that we all fall out and end up hating each other. What's happening today? We're standing here in front of the Brighton Unitarian Church and we've got bags and we've got instruments and we've got far too much to carry but we're going to do it anyway because it's what we're doing. We're going to have to deal with along the way, and yeah, some some things have gone wrong, some things have gone right, and we're working out. I think our, how gone, we're communicating. Um, we're starting to think perhaps we've taken a bit too much with us. Perhaps our bags are a little bit bigger, but at the same time, perhaps we need all those things. And in the next, if we were to jettison it now, a week a week away, we might need it. So I think we just need to stick with it for about seven to ten days and see if we get stronger. I think I know where we're going. I think he knows, knows where we're going. Um, the bad news is that we are about here. Ten squares, which is about about six miles. Oh, that's it. Well, that's as the crow flies. My father telling me his grandfather used to walk down the country lanes on the summer's evenings and they could actually hear the, the butterflies' wings as they were taking off. There were so many of them. Absolute clouds of them. Wow. We'll never see that today. Change old habits die turn in the page. Gotta keep that fire burning. I'm a butterfly child. Okay, we've walked how many miles today? 15 miles. Stupid amount of miles. Uh, we got lost along the way. My idea of uh, compass based map reading, which is a sort of uh, academic curve, was uh, completely mismatched with 
Ian's concept of map reading, which is driven by paranoia and uh, a sense of uh, worry about getting lost. Um, and we created a monster that got us completely and utterly lost off the map for a great amount of time. My dreams and wishes, I will be tired, you tired? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's happening? Um, I think we're having a, a kind of country detour. By well, rambling, not rambling. We just received uh, a phone call today saying that um, we've got a letter back from 10 Downing Street because when we went away we um, sent a letter to Tony Blair telling him what we were doing, sent him a CD and asking if we could stop by for a cup of tea and have a chat with him when we passed through London and uh, we've received a letter back but we don't know what the letter says yet so hopefully we're going to find out today. That would be good. What I expressed in my letter, I um, I said at the end of the letter that I think if the world is to move through this potential crisis, then politics of compassion has to take centre stage. Uh, this next song was inspired by this old guy that used to come into a shop where I was working. And uh, he was really, really old and he liked his chocolate that used to come in every day on his uh, little uh, wheelie bike thing. And uh, you see yourself in the future. Then, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the very last day that he came in, he came and he, he pulled me close to me. He said, "Do you know, Matt? Last night I had a dream, and a little bird said I was at the edge of the river, and I don't think I'm going to come back tomorrow." And he, he didn't come back the following day, and he actually did die. And um, this is a song inspired by that. The edge of the river, never coming home, never coming home. The edge of the river. Oh, it was great. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. My Think feet hurt like like buggery. Right. <laughs> so <does> mine. <laughs> what what uh, was the best part of the gig? Do you think? Um, probably the uh, the guys who turned up who looks a bit like they were on their way to a rave. Right. Uh, clapping along and uh, dancing. Okay. They were dancing, weren't they? Yeah, they were, yeah. I'll they were enjoying it. themselves. How do you feel personally about the state of the environment today? And what do you think is the best way of uh, approaching it on a personal level? Um, I think we're faced with a lot of challenges. Um, and the more you learn about environmental issues, the more complicated it seems to get. So you can look at an issue like recycling, um, and then people start saying to you, OK, yeah, recycling's great, but it's very energy intensive, or perhaps the, the products are being shipped to China and used to be recycled. And it can become so complicated that you almost feel quite disempowered. So yeah. I think what's important is that people feel like they can take small steps. And it doesn't matter that you know it's just something uh, small that you're doing. It, you're not actually, you don't know what all the answers are. You don't know how to create a sustainable world. It still matters that you make those small steps and you do make those changes. So yeah, last night when I was talking with Ian over there, he was expressing his concern about his back, which is quite bad. I think he's in lots and lots of pain, and he's not convinced that he can make the bit in Wales. And um, I was just trying to convince him that um, in Bristol we got a few days off, so hopefully he can heal. And there's other solutions as well, like um, perhaps we could take a trolley instead of the bag. Hmm. I think it is really quite serious what he's got. Yeah. So we need to start thinking about that. Right. How many days is this? Bristol to Chepstow is one day. Chepstow to Monmouth is another day. And then Monmouth to Handy is another day. Um, I've kind of like spanned my shoulder over the last 10 days, which has been getting 
progressively worse and uh, have decided to leave the tour. Um, it's a bit bad for the guys because they're going to have to kind of like rethink what they're doing and it's, you know, free downs too. So on that side, front I'm really sorry guys, but I just have looked at the maps quite closely and looked at what we've got to do and I'm very concerned that I'm just going to end up sort of class pretty much up like crippled somewhere and um, just not being able to get out of there. At least it's not raining. Good Fair luck, man. Take it easy. Good luck, Holly. Good luck, mate. Take care. Don't be a stranger. Away, and we're going that way. This is our first day of walking without Ian, so I'm carrying this, and this is why we're doing the walk. <laughs> Little ripples make waves. <laughs> Again. Sorry? Do you, what, do you think it's just like a, a natural progression in the world, the, all, these, yes. all the things that are happening at the moment? Yeah, it's just one of those things that happens every 10,000 yeah. years or something. Yeah, but do you not think that mankind is having quite a huge influence over what's happening at the moment? Can you not see that perhaps that we are, we're almost like a fifth element in the world, you know? We have so much impact on the world, we're like another element. No, I don't believe it. I just think it's just a natural phenomenon. Look at that. It's about the world. Our phenomenon. Natural okay. phenomenon. Yeah. yeah. After the storm. Seven Bridge and something really, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but Ollie's gone missing and I think he's bottled it. I think he, and he couldn't tell me. I don't, I think that's what's happened. the right way and, right. Um, and you weren't listening. Uh, I was going the right way for a cup of tea 
Yeah. You were going the wrong way for the path. Yeah, but I thought we were going for a cup of tea. Oh, oh right, okay. That looks fantastic, that does. That's a real old, that's a real vintage, that one, isn't it's it? It's over 100 years. Look at that. Let me know about it, bloody 50 or 60. And somebody left it me. I don't even know if it'll go now. It's tied up with string and boot laces and yeah. ribbons. It's bloody yeah. heavy. Has there been many changes that you've seen? I was seen? talking to a walker only the other day and he said, you we're the lucky ones because we don't remember it. He said, you're the unlucky one because you used to, I said, we'd see maybe 40 Skylarks up here every morning on the way to school. I haven't seen one now for 20 or 30 years because of this grassland. They and that's it. farming practice. Farming yeah. practice, making silage, gets rid of all ground nesting birds. You'll see them up the mountain tomorrow, you'll see some Skylarks up there. Mm. And the cuckoos died out when they because they used to lay in the Skylarks nests and that, you see. Okay. And um, he thought I was the unlucky one because I do miss it all. And they've got a new policy now. I know it's said for some mouth. They pick up the dead sheep. It's a fallen stock policy. But now we've got no buzzards because that's what they live on. Ah. You see, there's a few here, yeah, but not many. Right. How does it feel to take a look at this uh, map? Tomorrow's map. Um. <sighs> Where is it? Flipping long way. How far that's, is it? Do you right, think? that's about a mile. Right, okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, <laughs> sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, probably about twenty miles. Sometimes. Twenty miles and gig. And gig. Twenty miles and gig. How do you feel about that? And slightly demented. <laughs> Basically, yesterday we walked over the mountains in Wales and we got absolutely soaked and almost frozen to death and blown off the top into the valleys below. Um, feeling totally knackered. We walked about 21 miles, I think, over, well, the actual top of the mountain itself was about 12 miles, I guess, and it was just 12 miles of barren, moon-like landscape with these kind of tufts of black grass and, kept, and, and sand and just waterlogged paths. I was up to my knees in water, covered, covered in mud. Um, at one point I felt like I had a parachute on my back and the waterproof cover of my bag was sort of like propelling me up into the air, you know, like a paraglider or something. In terms of the houses we live in, there's huge scope for change there. You know, I think we, we've got so many opportunities, not just to do the exciting things like wind turbines and photovoltaics, but also stuff like insulating your loft, turning your heating down by one degree, turning it off when you don't really need it, all of those things, looking at the water conservation, putting in a rainwater bar, looking at how you travel around, you know, maybe even just reducing your car use by one trip a week, all of those things. The cumulative impact of that is huge. In the darkness of wisdom, through the speed and the rain. So here we are in Liverpool at the Cabin Club, the famous Cabin Club, where the Beatles and many other Merseyaks began. I'm Tim. I'm John Mayer. I'm a drummer in the Chimneys. OK. I'm a drummer. I'm not doing it all. He just drums to himself. Right. And uh, when are you on, then? Uh, what? 
me half. Oh dear. <laughs> she wants me half. There you go. When you're on then, when the chimney's on. Uh, the chimney's on at half time. <laughs> right, this is back before you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you say like where you live, people care about it? Uh, where I live, there's a nuclear power plant, so... <laughs> right, right. And what do people feel about that? <laughs> it just, like, the town stinks. <laughs> to be honest, it, to, it does smell. Everyone who comes to witness says witness smells. You'll probably say it when you go through witness tomorrow on your travels, it smells. Right. Um, so, just like, document people in witness, because nobody really cares it's at all. Ever. It's, it's, one one the most. It's, it's one of the worst hundred towns in, uh, Britain. in, in Britain, it's according to Sky News. I think in the last hour or so I've witnessed an environmental catastrophe happening right at this minute, this day, every hour. This is the price of our cities. This is the price that has to be paid. Again. So, yeah, what is your personal feeling about the environment at this point in time? My personal feeling is the environment is in great danger. Planet Earth is at great risk because of negligence of past generations and particularly the lack of political will to address these issues. Uh, on a governmental level, what, what do you think is the best thing the government can be doing now? Come clean, be honest, yep. uh, and actually commit themselves to positive action, many of which they've dropped from their lips the words, but they've never implemented. Uh, integrated transport, we was, were told they were going to implement. Yep. Uh, we're told that they're going to look at, the, they're going to meet, exceed the Kyoto Protocol requirements. Uh, we're told that they uh, want to have and produce sustainably, but they're not putting money into it. Absolutely. Not rely on a simple four or five year uh, tarting up of things in the hope of getting re-elected. I feel like there's only two of us now, but I do feel like we've now got the ability to go in anywhere and um, perform and perform well with get people into what we're doing even if they're not necessarily into like folk music. Okay.
walk your talk tour has now reached London after 900 miles, some 40 gigs, and a protest petition to Mr. Blair and number 10 Down Street. It's all part of the environment. Do your bit with the environment. stay here for a good couple of days and then make our way towards the southeast of London into Kent. But before that we have a gig at the 12 Bar Club and uh, we've decided to do it funk styly for which I've grown my hair. You actually look like Graham Sooness. <laughs> oh my god! Yours. Thank you, that's very kind. So Matt, where did you get those sunglasses from? I found them on the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think they suit me or not? No, they look crap. Right, over there in the distance, somewhere, is Brighton. How far away do you reckon it is? 40 miles? I reckon we can do it in one day. No, fuck off. Do you want this camera up your ass? Yeah. Let's get back to Brighton. Nighttime walking requires vision. Night vision. You look like you got a halo around you. In a place where I belong. It's getting dark. I honestly reckon we can make it. The sunrise tomorrow morning. That is really good news. Johnny Appleseed, Johnny Appleseed, he lived his life by planting trees. Johnny Appleseed. Twelve miles to Brighton. Miraculously. We just passed a house up the road. We heard someone rustling by the bins, and uh, we you make us uh, you make it sound so seedy. <laughs> well, it wasn't seedy, and uh, so we approached this lady whose house it was, and asked her if we could have some water. And she was like, "Sure, sure, sure, you can have some water." And then uh, she noticed that, well, she said, "Oh, the road's really dangerous that you're walking down." Uh, have you got a torch? And I said no, because our torch has just run out. So she kindly went and got some batteries for the torch. Now working. And uh, she also got some crisps and some chocolate biscuits for us, which are yeah. And they're the nice ones with all the chocolate yeah. bits, bits of big bits of chocolate on. Across 
seems to tell me something But I don't know where to turn I think I'm going to have to take this box shopping with me. It's going to be very strange not holding it in my arms. It's going to have to yeah. go to work with it. I've got a strange affection for it now. I'm about to plant some seeds to commemorate. Sometimes I hear a calling. Sometimes I hear it cry out. The trouble lies around the corner. I don't want to find out. Glance to the moon, so afraid. Look to the stars all again. See some. I've just gotta see something. Say anything. Here and now. Here and now. The future lies among us. Here and now. Here and now. His grandfather used to walk down the country lanes on the summer's evenings and he could actually hear the, the butterflies' wings as they were taken off. There were so many of them. Absolute clouds of them. Wow. We'll never see that today. Stop, get back to the planet. Stop, get back to the planet. Stop, get back to the planet. He cried all this land. Stop, get back to the planet. Stop, get back to the planet. Stop, 